the West Coast and Orange County USL Championship action continues as Orange County SC welcome FC Tulsa to Irvine to close out the evening in the championship. Joined by the marvelous Gary Bailey, the former Manchester United goalkeeper Mike Watts on hand as well. And two teams in desperate aim for all three points this evening. Let's start with Ashton Miles. This is an OC kid who made good last week, the Omega accounting player to watch tonight. Yeah, just 19 years of age. How do they keep doing it, Orange County, finding this young talent and bringing them through? And what a good goal he scored from a corner last week against Miami FC. So excited to see how this man develops in the years ahead. Take a look at that remarkable moment in front of a sellout crowd here in Orange County last week. That got the game on the level terms. Ultimately, Miami would go ahead once more. Orange County would ultimately have the last lap as they get the Thomas Among 70th minute game time goal to steal a point. FC Tulsa arguably has the most talented striker in the league. Watch out. Yeah, his stats are brilliant. Philip Goodrum, he scores some wonderful goals. The one against Las Vegas in the top corner. 13 goals in 22 appearances for Tulsa. 23 in 47 for Memphis. That's one every two games. What a star talent this man is. And he's got a new running partner up front. All eyes on Stefan Stojanovic, who comes in from Philadelphia. Yeah, 23 years of age. Also scored against Las Vegas. Got 11 in 45 for Philly Union. So, you know, a lot expected of him. Put these two together. And who knows what FC Tulsa might, uh, might achieve this season. Well, there's a belief that Mario Sanchez can take this team to the playoffs this year against the side that just a couple of years ago won the title in the championship. In Irvine tonight, a great way to conclude action on this Saturday evening. Orange County, welcome FC Tulsa, and it's coming up next. When I found out I was pregnant, I was obsessed with getting ready. I wanted the best doctor who could help me with my birthing plan. Nice maternity suites and a level three NICU in case anything went wrong. Lactation specialists and help getting my body back. I wanted a place that would care for me as a whole person. Welcome to world-class maternity care for all of you. Hogue Women's Health Institute, you belong here. Every person has inherent existing potential. Each one of us can move better, feel better, and perform better. Our goal is to create a movement culture that facilitates thriving, challenges the norms, and optimizes the human experience by providing the highest quality physical therapy. Whether you're returning to sport or simply seeking to live your best life, reimagine physical therapy. Discover your potential. California closing in on kickoff as we uh, tell you that tonight's match is sponsored in part by Hogue Orthopedic, the official orthopedic partner of Orange County SC. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineup for OCSC. They have made a change. Asensio's in. Yeah, Charlie Asensio for Seth Kasipli is injured and Thomas Among who scored last week. He replaces Ethan Zubak in that sort of 4-1, 4-1. And you'll find Partida will be the one that sits just in front of the back four. And Among will be just ahead of the four behind him. So that's roughly the shape there for Orange County. 
Conversely for Tulsa, here's a look at what Mario Sanchez is cooking. No changes to that side. They're still in that 3-4-3 lineup. Stojanovic up front with Goodrum just behind him and Portillo. What a dangerous front three they are with Segrist and Suahi bombing up on the flanks. And uh, they might, they might in fact play more with a three at the back as they have done in the past. So you might see okay. more of a 3-4-3 three, three shape. Rogers, Tete and Suahi, your three center backs. Underway tonight in California, Orange County taking on FC Tulsa. One of the final matches of this loaded match day around the championship. Orange County three unbeaten to start the campaign with a draw against Memphis to hang their hat on last week. While FC Tulsa comes off a 3-1 season opening win at Las Vegas. Shuttler. Not quite sure that was according to plan, <laughs> but mission accomplished. Yeah, as long as you get it done. But for a goalkeeper who in the opening match comes up and scores the equalizer from, I think it was a corner, he's allowed to have the odd slip. I don't mind. <laughs> the fall. And Keel flames out, comes to Michael Creek. But we take a look at tonight's keys to the game. They're sponsored by Patterson Auto. You need to find a way to contain Philip Goodrum. Yeah, that's the, that's the big talking point, talking to Morton Carlson and asking him what he intended to do. It was the same as normal, and the only other difference was watch out for Philip Goodrum. He really rates him so highly and so important. We did also chat to FC Tulsa's coach, Mario Sanchez, and he said he wants to dictate the game with pressing. So let's see if they're able to do that here today, FC Tulsa. It won't be easy to press Orange County because they'll be pressing FC Tulsa and they do it quite well on their home ground. And sometimes you play on these tiny fields, right? And, and Tulsa at times gets that benefit. This is a pretty sizable patch of grass to try and cover and press. It could be a long, mile-filled night. Especially if you've been traveling across the country. You fall early, parried away by Creek, not over the line. So a corner to come for Orange County and Jafal trying to strike first. Decent save by Creek, just pushes it away from danger, gets his hands behind it. Jafal getting it on target. Remember last week against Miami FC, Orange County scoring twice from corners. No doubt FC Tulsa would have gone through that tape and they'll want to keep it a lot tighter. City side fiber corner, they've gone short this time around. Ball lobbed in. They did get the look they wanted, and wouldn't you believe it, it's the two guys who scored last week, Miles and Among, that were just beneath it. Ashton Miles getting his head on that, and he is some talent at 19 years of age. They say it's one of the best one versus one defenders they have in the club. Very difficult to get past him when you run at him, so if you add that to the fact he's very useful in the air, he really does have a great future in front of him. Push into the back of Stoyanovich. Young player from Chicago. Tete. Rogers. Bodies everywhere. Yosef is down. Also tried to play through, and uh, Yosef may need attention. Pressure from Stoyanovich. Does win it back. Stoyanovich coming. Shuttler as well. Got there first. And they will come back to the injured player. Milo Yosef, the 24 year old German player, electric in wide areas. Very, very quick. Looks like he took a knock to the, the face. And these days, players will insist on getting treatment. They'll stay down as long as it takes. And eventually, the referee will have to stop the game. Protocol. Just going back, though, to Colin Shuttler. Very quick off his line there. He had to get that right. If he missed times coming out of feet, it's an obvious penalty. Ball, 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 ball. There's 
Morton Carlson, head coach for Orange County, looking for some clarity, perhaps providing it. What a difference he's made since he took over last season. They were in all sorts of trouble, Orange County. He got them tight defensively, the second best defense in the entire USL behind Pittsburgh in terms of shots allowed on target. And he's got them playing well again this season, unbeaten in three, and they were top of the West coming into the weekend. So what a fabulous job he's done. Remarkable turnaround after things really stalled for whatever reason. Richard Chaplow at the beginning of the year and it started to feel like we might be in line for a 2021 kind of run where you make the change mid-season and glide all the way to the title. <laughs> Ultimately they did fall just short of that goal. And when we asked him about that he said you know what we just didn't have the depth in those final couple of matches and he said if we have you know if we get if we felt if we got more players on the bench we could rotate a bit more and We'll be able to make a real crack at it this season and just looking at them so far you've got to believe they have every chance of going the whole way well, having Kasipli and Zubak available off the bench tonight substantial Bryce Jameson Christian Sorto it's a good place to be for Orange County let's take a look at tonight's injury report it's sponsored by Zolfagari Law it is an extended Injury reported that center back Nakam is out. Scott is available and in the sub bench tonight. So that's positive news. Still without Dylan Powers who can play such a, a valuable role. Now sundown has just occurred in Orange County and for the players that are observing Ramadan, this is the first chance since sunrise this morning to take a moment to both hydrate and eat for the first time today. For those unfamiliar, this has occurred throughout the, the global game over this month of Ramadan. In matches in which players are observant. Uh, just talking about Orange County and looking at Jafal and some of the new players that they've brought in. They really have kept about 18 players, I think it is. Yes. It's only a handful of new players coming in, Jafal being one of them. And Brian Eloski and Seth Kosipli, in fact, in their fifth season. So when you get that sort of continuity, I think you have every chance of having a great run in this competition. Lob back, there goes Sawahi. Rogers. And snuck away from Yosef. gone here now if you take a look Camilo Ponce is on the field the 20 year old forward from New York we've just been alerted that there was in fact an injury in warm-ups before the game Philip Goodrum is not on the field Wow that's a bit of a shock now the ball hadn't really gotten to that end enough for us to entirely pick up on that yet but uh, certainly substantial. That's a massive change. If that's, if that's the biggest threat to Orange County and it disappears just before kickoff, we're not sure why, and they've had to make changes, then that really must have given the Orange County players a bit of a boost just before kickoff. No further information on that. So simply a late change. Meanwhile, Olaski, a late knock there. It's his uh, 100th appearance for Orange County today, Brian Olaski. Yeah. Rarified air. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, this is one of the clubs with the most history in the championship, so to start to put your name in that that stratosphere carries a little more weight here. Jafal knocked it wide, and this service goes towering over. Now for a goal kick. Talking of Oloskis, of course, the big question this season is who replaces Milan Oloski? Will it be Thomas Amon? Is he going to get the goals that they require? Or Zubek? Or who is it going to be? Because you've got to have a goal scorer who bangs in 15, 20 if you want to win titles normally, in most cases. So difficult player to replace, Milan Oloski. Well, big occasion for Ponce, puts it wide. Ball lobbed into the area. Ponce will continue to chase all the way to the end line and ran out of real estate. Wasn't able to save it, but ultimately it's still a corner. He's looking at Ponce there. He got 18 minutes of sub versus Vegas in his first game as a pro. So hit the ground running. He starts this <laughs> match. <laughs> Portillo plays short. Lane Ferry. It's a knuckleball into the area. Up by Segrist. Asensio. Tete. Arthur Rogers, former League One Defensive Player of the Year. Not once, but twice. There's Portillo. Swiped off of Dunbar. Diallo. A tidy spell here of holding onto the ball. FC Tulsa just settling into the match. And having lost Goodrum, I think that's what they need to do. Just get on the ball, hold possession. Just convince yourself that, hey, you can still win this game. You've still got Stojanovic up front. And the last thing you want to do is chasing the ball. So FC Tulsa doing well in these first few minutes. <laughs> Some uh, <laughs> polite disagreement as to whose ball it is. <laughs> one thing about Orange County, though, they're the only team, along with FC Tulsa, who only played the one match, of course, but only team to have scored multiple goals in multiple games. FC Tulsa did it in a single game. Lobbed long, Creek put this roll into him. And all six goals scored so far by Orange County, six different players, oh. including the goalkeeper. That's, that's right. <laughs> Got to keep mentioning that for the goalkeepers. It, this is for the union, I can tell. Absolutely. Well, this is enticing for Tulsa with a little bit of a gallop to it, Stojanovic. Well, Karam's around. Knocked to the head, inadvertent as it may be, but that's going to cause the referee to stop play. Trevor Wiseman. Like his name says, wise to stop play. It's a mong down. Tete heads or tries to hit the ball, heads into a mong's face, so it seemed. Very wisely, 
hit the ground quickly before referee Wiseman could give him any cards. And generally, if you, if you feel you're a bit late on a tackle and you've hit someone, you tend to go down as quickly as you can with an injury as well. And the hope referee sees it as a you know, clash of heads or whatever. We'll see if he'll take any action. Long's up, that's good news. It certainly is. He's getting back to the change. Camilo Ponce coming on to replace the main striker, Philip Goodrum, just minutes before kickoff. That would it always throws the team when we've been in that situation. You just get a little unnerved for a second that your star striker's out and is this young man, 20 years of age, going to be able to cope? But you soon settle in and you start playing with the players you've got and believing in them. It just takes a couple of minutes, though, and already it seems as if FC Tulsa have rearranged themselves. They, they might you sort of wonder with a, with a young player coming into the equation, sometimes it might be better not to know. Yes, yes. For 24, 48 <laughs> hours, however early a coach wants to start contemplating those moves. Yeah. Yeah. So it's often done that coaches will tell a young player only an hour before the game. Yeah. Just so they don't have too many night, sleepless nights, which can affect your fitness. I mean, you're yeah. not your fitness, but your energy levels going into a game. Well, there's me saying that it was professional to stay down. It looks like he really is hurt, so I hope he's better and get up from this. She had a... I believe that is on the ground. My comment was a generalization. Obviously, there are circumstances which are different, and this one does seem to be different. It does seem to be struggling. And imagine that for FC Tulsa if they lost two players, one just before kickoff and one 15 minutes into the game. That would not be good. Well, that's going to leave a. Uh, Really brutal moment, both in depth for striker and center back. So you do have a, a club legend, to be fair, in Bradley Bourgeois, available off the bench. Yeah, he's not coming back on. You wouldn't have thought the way he's leaving the pitch. So we wish him well in recovery and hope he'll be fit for the next match for FC Tulsa fans to enjoy watching him play. You know, it was so interesting seeing his time at New Mexico, how Troy Lassane and eventually Zach Prince said he was finding his voice and organizing more and growing in confidence as a young professional player when he first came out of High Point. And now the Ghanaian at the age of 28 is really tasked with leading that back line. It comes off in obvious pain. And it is Bourgeois who's going to come on. Sub is brought to you by MetaQuip. And so, in theory, you would think Tulsa now down two players on their bench, really before this has even gotten started. Stojanovic. That had leaked over the line. Well, Gary, you talked about it as a, a, a striker having to come in and sort of the last minute adjustments to it all. In theory, this is a little more cut and dry, but it's still a shock to the system, I'd imagine, for Tulsa. Yes, it is. It is. And as I say, it's good to get on the ball, just knock it around, get a sense that, hey, everything's okay. Let Bourgeois just sort of fit in. Let Ponce up front, just get a feel for the ball. And then, and then you're comfortable. Then you've got your team on the pitch. You know that everyone's plugged into where they should be. And off you go and play the game as you would normally play it. Portillo. Got away from Among and picked up by Rodgers. Swings it in over the top. There's Shuttler. You saw Dunbar immediately book it for Bourgeois as if to say, just how game yeah. ready are you right now? <laughs> oh, you always test for weaknesses, don't you? 
when there's a young goalkeeper, you'll always take shots at goal just to see if they're ready for it. Ponce, you'll probably give him a bump or two, see if he's up for the physical battle. And Bourgeois has been here, but it's sitting on the bench for, <laughs> what, 30 minutes since yep. warm-ups? Exactly. No way he could have been prepared to come into the game and into this. Dunbar. Dunbar curling. Closer it got, the more you thought maybe I could sneak inside the post, but it uh, snaps late. He put some serious bend on that, didn't he, at the end? Look at it there. It really is turning, but I think the goalkeeper, Michael Creek, is more than comfortable that's going wide of the goal. He's looking at Colin Shuttler, second goal against Miami. Big question marks as to how they beat him. There's a shot from, from way out. And he seemed to misread the ball in the air. He got two hands to it and couldn't push it out. So having been the hero in the first match of the season against Sac Republic, getting the equalizer in the end, he became a little bit of a villain in the last match. <laughs> because of his high standards, and fairness to him, he's a very good goalkeeper. And I think a few of his teammates looked back and said, really, that beat you? Yes, Gav Gavilanias, I was going to say, sorry. Yeah. Was the guy who took the uh, shot last week? Two goals, Alan yep. Gavilanias. That earns you player of the week. The first one was also a little bit of question mark again. Colin Shuttler beaten at the near post from a, a tightish angle. Maybe he didn't see the ball. That's forgivable. The second one, I expect him to stop that. So he'll be looking to have a good game today, Colin, and just, you know, just get over the hump of that. Miami equalizer. I'm not sure there's any position in this game that begs for highs and lows in the way that goalkeeping position can. There I would agree with you. <laughs> One thing used to frustrate me, my striker could score once every three games and be a hero. Yeah. I can play Brilliant, not brilliant, but you know, fairly well for 93 minutes, make one mistake, and I'm the villain. That's it. <laughs> Asensio ran out of room. See, there's no villain here. Ball just ran away. Exactly. I always say to my uh, to the, the, the kids that I, I teach goalkeeping to their parents, you will not get a better test of character and growth in a child than have them be a goalkeeper. <laughs> Because they're not the hero the whole time. They take the knocks, they have to hold their hand up, and they, it gives you, gives you an inner strength. So goalkeepers listening, do not despair. Your character will grow, even if, <laughs> <laughs> even if it's tough on the pitch. Sensio inside. Shata! Well, you don't blame the, the former trialist for having a go. Early in this season, he's found himself having a, a go or two like that Every game. A, lot, a, bit, a, lot of, a bit too much space there. You know, you're 25 yards out. You've got to get closed down a little bit more quickly. And eventually he says, well, if no one's closing me down, I'll have a dip. And he wasn't that far away. And troubles blossoming here. Four by Yosef. Kept in by Lamb. Off of Segrist. Spell for Orange County now, controlling the possession. I don't think it'll worry FC Tulsa too much in their 3 1 victory away at Las Vegas, the only match they've played. They only had 29% possession, yet they won 3 1. So 
They can sit deep if they have to. They can counter when they need to. And they can be quite devastating in attack, even without Philip Goodrum. Stojanovic got a goal in that match. And so did Milo Yosef. So they've got goal scorers on the pitch. It was really good to talk to Mario Sanchez a little bit about what the, the long-term vision is, right, for this project. They do intend to be the team that really puts it to you, not sort of sits and suffers and waits. But they're going to have to have a couple of clubs in their bag to make it through the season. <laughs> you would think. He's got some good ideas, Mario Sanchez. Lovely energy about him. And obviously his aim is to make the playoffs. But he went on to say, but it's more than that. It's changing the culture at the club. I want a club that expects to make the playoffs. He said, I want everyone who works at the club, as we see the offside, I want everyone at the club to feel part of it, all the staff, not just the players. It really has some big aims to take FC Tulsa up a couple of levels. There, there's been turnover, and he goes, it's not just the staff or the players. It's organization-wide. We want to be a club where you want to be here. You want to stay here. It starts with the, with the team on the field and includes the, the front office and bringing the community in. And he certainly knows uh, a thing or two about building a club from the studs up, given his time at Louisville, both with their academy and with both their men's and women's pro teams, Lou City and Racing Louisville. Good run from Dunbar. Among. Squared, Chata. Good spin. Jafal. Jafal! That is a remarkable first goal for Orange County. That's an absolutely brilliant example of how to turn the awareness of knowing where the defenders were. Two defenders on him. But he knew that they were sort of trying to sneak around him to steal the ball. And he was able to take a turn into the gap. And then what a finish from Sofian Jafal as well. Absolutely top, top class. But the awareness of the Frenchman to know exactly where the players were around him. And you can see the MLS experience from Austin FC coming through. And we were just saying earlier that they were allowing players a little bit too much space on the edge of the box. Wait for this ball to come in and just see how he turns, how he's aware that there's two players, both of them, both of them around him, Milo Youssef and Bubakar Diallo, both were thinking, I can nick this ball, they go wrong side of him, he's away, he sprints, and then what a fantastic bend. Michael Creek gets a hand to it, but not enough to keep it out the back of the net. They felt he just needed minutes. Well, he'll get minutes. The goal presented by Hogue, and what a goal it is. Sofian Javal, his first goal for Orange County Soccer Club. Comes in the 27th minute, and Orange County trying to start the campaign. Four on the bounce without defeat. Whistle's gone, it's another potential head injury, which draws the uh, athletic training staff out. Well, this is already their best start since 2011 when they won opening three matches, Orange County. But you're right, they go a fourth match, unbeaten. Everyone in the West is going to be looking at them saying this could be the team to beat. And they've brought in quality players with MLS experience. Not just Jafal, but Cameron Dunbar now in his second season, but he's got MLS experience. Bronilowski played in Poland for a while. Charlie Asensio from Austin FC as well, and it goes on. You put, in, you put as many good players as that together, Morton Carlson, you got yourself a good side. You know, I was chatting with Kano Smith about this because he was part of the initial build with Tommy Sohn in Birmingham. Now he's at Rhode Island. They sort of figured it out on the fly. You can go bring in guys in their 30s who played in MLS, and they aren't necessarily plateaued or rising the tail end of their career and this is not the league to extend out your playing time 
it, it's just too demanding in, in a number of, of both physical and certainly the travel and, and the uniqueness of coming into this league, both stylistically and travel. So if you get guys like, like a Powers or you, you, you listed it out quite well, guys still either on the upswing or entering their prime mm. with that experience, completely different equation than bringing in a 33 or 35-year-old player who's played 250 games in MLS, better household name, but maybe not the right fit now. I think that's a very, very good point. And, and to that, Charlie Asensio, 24 years of age, right. he wants to come here and play well and get back to the MLS. Same with you know, Sofian Jafal, Cameron Dunbar. They still see a greater future ahead for them. But you're right, you come here at 33, your days at MLS are over. You're coming here just to see out the final days. And the, the, the desire isn't there. The commitment level isn't there. It's human nature. So I think you make a, a very good point. Well, if Olivier Giroud wants to come down from L.A., oh, well, he'll take him. That's a little bit different. You can always make exceptions. That's right. Yellow card comes out for the tackle on Among. Started to pick up speed and power going through midfield. And got whacked at the ankles. Helped up by Stojanovic. Gets away there. You see, that's just nasty. And I think Justin Portillo, that's a fair yellow card. It, was, it wasn't an error. He'd lost him, and he just said, right, I'm bringing you down. So <laughs> you pick up the yellow. Problem for Portillo, he's quite a, you know, quite a battler in midfield. Now he's got to tread lightly. Two-thirds of the match still to go. I don't see why you have to bring someone down in midfield. If they're on the edge of your box, I get it. You know, there's a, there's a risk he's going to get in the box and cause you trouble. But on the halfway line, you know, now you've got to manage that yellow card. Well, that's not your center back either. You did have two players behind you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You didn't really need to do it. And how many times over the years have, have we said that early on in a match and that same person's got a second yellow and left the pitch and, of course, the whole dynamic of the game changes and you can trace it all the way back to an unnecessary first yellow card. Well, I can tell you, Tulsa cannot afford to have anyone else leave this field. That is some scary stuff from Michael Creek. When it comes off, it's gorgeous. Oh, when it doesn't, you're up the creek without a pedal? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> God, I get a heart attack watching goalkeepers do that. If, I, if I'd have tried that in my day, <laughs> the manager would have come on the pitch during the game and clubbed me. Do <laughs> you know if Sir Alex ever came around on that after your time there in, in the later years? After my time with Peter Schmeichel, he started to get more and more acceptable, but initially, no. Bourgeois knocks it out. Well, he had better feet than me. True. <laughs> Asensio. That's going to pinball around. It's still here. Spinning. Partially cleared, and that is launched out of play. Way over the bar. Just coming under some extra pressure now. FC Tulsa, Orange County, looking so sw uh, slick. So sharp in the box, getting good crosses in and beginning to dominate possession. And already 1-0 down, FC Tulsa have got to be very careful that the changes they've made already don't start to bother them. It's very easy at this stage to go, well, we haven't got Philip Gerdrum and we've had to make one change of defense and start to feel negative. You've got to battle here. Got to keep control of this game. Can't afford to go 2-0 down now. Battle out of midfield, well handled by the former Boston College and Wake player, Ponce. Orange County got the opening goal. An individual master class from Jafal. Hello, Yosef. Orange County SC hits the road the next two weeks, returns home to Championship Stadium Saturday, April 20th, 420 against rival Sacramento Republic. It's Gnarly's birthday party. My guy. 
Don't miss out on this event. It's fun for the whole family. Get your tickets today. OrangeCountySoccer.com slash tickets. There's Shuttler to pull it down. Nicely taken by the goalkeeper. The ball had time in it, but still had to come and collect. Might have got a little, little bump in the process, but I'm sure you'll be okay. You mentioned they're on the road, Orange County, next couple of games. Memphis away, San Antonio away. <laughs> Not easy, and that's why getting three points here today and keeping their unbeaten record is of even more importance given the two tough away games coming up. I mean, what a murderer's row start. You really start to do the math. That's a much improved Miami team that we saw, no doubt. That's a tough tackle by Diallo. That's uh, merely a yellow. Diallo getting pulled away by the cooler head of Ponce in this moment. Let's have another closer look at it. Yeah, you see, it's 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 the it's the lunge. It's not that you didn't get the ball. It's that your body and your other leg come flying through, and if the player is still putting his weight on one leg, and you come through with both legs, you can do a lot of damage. So again, it's it's. It's not whether you got the ball, it's the way in which you get the ball and, and the danger you represent to the opposition in the process. Well, thankfully, Asensio able to continue. Doesn't have to go head for the Cabanas, which are back for 2024. They're up on the Omega deck, premium experience, the best way to invite out your group up to 20 to enjoy a match here at the Champ. Enjoy your own private bar, other exclusive amenities. You can inquire today at orangecountysoccer.com slash premium for more information. Lasky. This Orange County team started reigning regular season league champ, reigning West regular season champ. Get that improved Miami team, this new look Tulsa team that's only played once, so you didn't really know what you were gonna get, and you can double that with the, the late switch before the game began with Goodrum going out. And then you have to turn around and go play San Antonio and Memphis. Memphis. And then, you know, the next game at home is Sac Republic. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, yet, you know, th know maybe what? Gnarly just wanted three points for his birthday. <laughs> think about this league now. I don't think any games are easy. Ever since the two sides stepped away. Yeah. You know, every team you play is a, is a very decent team. Portillo pumps it forward. That's uh, well brought down by Ferry. Taken out of the air and lofted out of play by Stojanovic. Stojanovic coming from one of those two teams, the, the Philadelphia Union two, although his time came in MLS Next Pro. You just can't quite get over the ball. The object there is to hit it down as much as you can. Not an easy skill. Diallo, wide from Portillo. A little angle away from Ferry. Along to Orange County. High pressing here, FC Tulsa, which is what coach Mario Sanchez said he wants from his team. Now they're beginning to back off as Colin Shuttle looks to knock it long. Sanchez did bring Luke Spencer along, by the way, as well. They do need an additional striker. I know where to find him. The, the former Lou City talisman. Yeah. Big, tall, dangerous on set pieces. I don't know if they could get him registered in time for this game, but I have a feeling he could be ready if needed for the next one. It'll be home against Phoenix 
next Saturday. I think that next Friday. Yeah, but look at their runner games. Phoenix, Sac Republic, Charleston. So I say this league is so tough now that I don't think there's any easy runs, easy games. I think it's one, one of the, what, in my opinion, the best USL I've, I've seen. It's just got stronger and stronger every year. That's early service. Pounded away. Slide in. Diallo got knocked down. Here comes the latest card. So it might be one of those nights. The wise man has spoken. And that'll be Chata booked. Good time for FC Tulsa to score if they can, just before half time. Nice little set piece coming up. It's in a good position. Portillo's got a magic wand, but if he looks to his left, there was about 30 yards of unimpeded space down the line. Stead sought the back post. Header snapped back in front by Sawahi. Ultimately, Orange County survives the threat. Sawahi doing really well there to get that ball back into play. It's just, uh, it was quite deep, but maybe that's what they planned to do. Unfortunately, there was no one waiting for his header back. But that's better from FC Tulsa. They've been on the back foot for a while. And they're beginning to put up a little bit of a fight again. They lost 3-0 in last year's fixture, FC Tulsa. Last time they played, so they won't want a repeat of that. All wound wide. And there's Segrist up to the task, acquired midseason from Colorado Springs last year. Over from Partita. You know, Orange County, so many players back, they remember it. But so much turnover at Tulsa, I'm not sure how much of an impact it made on, on the 11 that they've actually got on the field, much less the brand new coaching staff, that 3 0 result. I agree. I'm just mentioning it more for the fans, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like bad memories of the loss. <laughs> last time they visited Orange County. But you're right. I mean, even players who were in that match, a new season brings a whole new approach. Ponce foul. How many attempts did it take where you just couldn't beat a team before you started to go? Is there some... Some mojo. <laughs> I don't think there's any specific number. It's just, it's all in the mind. But you do get that. You do the certain clubs where you just, for some reason, don't get a good result. Yeah. In the locker room beforehand, you try and change that by saying, right, we do a good win. We're, you know, you try and convince yourself. Doesn't always work. When you were at United, you were the boogeyman. A lot of the time, but we, we had Liverpool side that were European champions. Oh, epic tackle to keep that away from Stojanovic. Still on here for Tulsa. Teed up for Josef. Trying to deke and dangle and turning. It's Ferry and blasted right at Shuttler. Scuffed a bit. I had, a, had a moment of opportunity, didn't it, for FC Tulsa. They'll be happy with that. At least they're creating something on the edge of the Orange County box. Was that you giving Liverpool credit? Oh, I, hate, I hate to say it, but yes, they were not a bad side back in the day. <laughs> not bad now either. Yeah, yeah, very much so, yeah. It was all the time in between. <laughs> happy time from a Man United <laughs> point of view trust me and now Liverpool fans are saying the same for them it's a very happy time that Man United is struggling <laughs> turn by Diallo <laughs> T 
10 ticket flex packs are the best way to attend multiple matches. Or to use all 10 tickets on your friends and family out to a match here at the Champ. And to orangecountysoccer.com slash flex dash packs for more information. Rogers. Into the first of six minutes of first half stoppage time. There's the break at sundown to allow the, the players observing Ramadan to break fast. And Tete had to come out of the game due to injury about 20 minutes into the match. Two additional stoppages to check for potential head injuries, along with the goal that was scored. You're watching a good example here of why Orange County had the second best defense last season. They drop into a low block very quickly, very well organized, lots of numbers behind the ball. Look at those orange shirts, almost everybody deep. And look at the counter attack now. Oh, well, it's very much on Dunbar. Dunbar. Dunbar getting cheeky with it. Finally, he's lost it. Bourgeois sends it. That deflected kindly to Olaski. Early service. Juggled forward, now sent wide. Mong did well to hold that run, stay onside. There's Miles. Endearing performance to start the season from Ashton Miles. He was committed to play at UCLA. You can already tell why he was uh, sought after for a professional deal. Mm, absolutely. Got a great spring when you see him score that goal from the corner against Miami FC in the last match. Mm. Gets up so high. If, you can, if you're tall already and you've got a good spring, it makes you a very dangerous player at set pieces and very well equipped to deal with Defensive headers. Fox operates back through Shuttler. This bourgeois started Tulsa, ended up in the Houston Dynamo Academy was captaining teams there. Here's that really low block again from Orange County. It's not just they're in their own half, they're, they're, they're 10 yards inside their own half and then deeper than that. They really give you little ground in which to play. Ooh, this is uh, becoming an issue for both teams, frankly. Another yellow card. Kick the ball away. Oh, you can't do that. Another one of those cheap yellows that might come back to haunt young Camilo Ponce. Sencio shielded to the line of Bourgeois and down to a knee, it's off the field of play. And that will bring out the athletic training staff. And for a moment, I think Bourgeois thought he was about to get a booking. I don't think this is the the example of a well-argued case so much as a case that was never on the docket. <laughs> the referee knew all along. 
So Orange County, at least for the moment, are playing with 10 as a result of that injury. It's an outside back that's down, Asensio. This has just never quite found a rhythm. T.O. wide with the end line, that's too far. It's a good personification of the half. Well, Orange County in the pound seat, they've got the goal. They've got FC Tulsa trying to break them down, but not getting much joy. They've got depth on the bench, which FC Tulsa haven't got because they've already made one or two changes, you could say, including the Philip Goodrum one just before kickoff. So I would guess that Morton Colson will come in at halftime quite pleased with the way things are and believing that his team can go on and finish this off in the second half. It's not to say, of course, that Mario Sanchez believes that. He'll come in and fire up that FC Tulsa team and tell them to get the ball to Stojanovic more often. Blaine Ferry has had a couple of little moments on the ball, creative moments. And they'll feel at 1-0, they're still very much in this match. So two contrasting points of view, perhaps. Throw for Tulsa if there's any time at all remaining. Oh, it's on now for Yosef. Stojanovic making the central run. Yosef, that cleared back, blocked. Portillo gave it a lick. Sent up top, Ferry. Orange County sprinting into the attack. Bourgeois the touch. And halftime arrives. So it was quite the half in a number of ways. It again, felt a little out of rhythm from the beginning with the, the late change in lineup that saw an MVP finalist of prior years lifted for Tulsa and Philip Goodrum. However, Orange County does get the goal in the 27th and goals did in fact change games. Oh, absolutely. Orange County looking strong. There's three yellow cards for FC Tulsa. Game got a little bit chippy here and there, and FC Tulsa got to be careful with those on yellow. So, yeah, it's all set up for a very exciting second half. Gnarly welcoming the players down the tunnel, and we'll head into halftime. Jafal, a uh, remarkable first goal for his new club. And the home side has the advantage at the break. Look around the league, look at our first half highlights all coming up here in Irvine. When you are killed by a drunk driver, you become nothing but a stick figure on a police report. Your death will be a story never to be told by you, and justice will never be served. Last year, nearly 13,000 stick figures were drawn by officers after a drunk driving fatality. It will take everyone to eliminate drunk driving so that no one ever has to tell your story from a police report.
Welcome back to Irvine, California. Our halftime is presented by IPA Physio, the official physical therapy provider of Orange County Soccer Club. Joined by Gary Bailey, Mike Watts, a lot to chat about in uh, what is a very busy moment around the championship. How about we take a look at what's coming up for Orange County? So we talked about it a bit in the first half, but I mean, this is this is as difficult as it gets. You get a couple of those California teams coming in. There's always a little extra juice there. You have to go to Louisville, to San Antonio, a Memphis team that's never going to make it easy. Absolutely. I mean, every one of those is a tough one. Monterey Bay had a good start to the season. Lou City, a top or joint top in the East. Memphis, what they finished fourth last season, they're even stronger this season. So, yeah, brutal, brutal. But if you want to do well, you're going to have to beat some of these teams, if not three or four of them. Meanwhile, for FC Tulsa, so they'll see the reigning champion on Friday night. Those tend to be a little rowdy in Phoenix historically. <laughs> You'll usually see some pretty imbibed folks. Then you get at Sacramento, you host Charleston, who are the finalists and the winner of the East in the playoffs. Then you have to go to El Paso and Birmingham. So to go through April, you, you fail to get points in this game if it ends up going that way. And it, it could go pretty, pretty rough pretty quick if you can't find some points, especially in those home matches. Yeah, agree 100%. And it's almost the same story as we've mentioned now for Orange County. Everyone's a tough match. Everyone's difficult. You can have a good run and shoot up. You can have a bad run and shoot down. Philip Goodrum and whatever injury he's got or whatever reason he's not available, that becomes crucial. If he's back for the next match, fine. But if it's something that's going to keep him out for a few games, that could be a big problem for FC Tulsa. That's the kind of thing that can really hamstring your season. As FC Tulsa will certainly uh, have quite a bit to deal with. We'll uh, step aside, come on back in a moment. Go get it, Doug. When termites show up, So do we. Terminix it. You've given us a foundation to be proud of. We build on this now. This is it now, gents. This is us from now on. be honest most of us aren't going to be professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals Might show up? So do we. Terminix it. Time is presented by IPA Physio. They're the official physical therapy provider 
of Orange County Soccer Club. Wonderful Saturday night in Southern California. OCSC ahead of FC Tulsa. 1-0 at halftime. Gary, Mike, we can tell you a bit about the USL Championship news and notes. Louisville City will see Indy 11 on CBS Coast to Coast on Saturday, April the 6th. We are less than seven days away now from that 4 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. Pacific start. First time ever on broadcast TV. Rhode Island's in. Albert Dequa, big shock, right? Oh, but what a striker he is. To get him, well done, Rhode Island. And, yeah, came the first official goal scorer. Scored twice in that game, didn't he? Did. Yeah. So too did Alan Gavilanis, which yep. earns what was a painful brace against Orange County for <laughs> Miami <laughs> FC. How about we take a look at the upcoming schedule for next week? Of course, Louisville and Indy, known as the Louisville Indianapolis Proximity Association Football Contest. It's next Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific on CBS. The rest of these games are on ESPN Plus, including that Friday night Tulsa Phoenix affair and Memphis and Orange County. Yeah, all great games. I mean, Detroit City started well, so that's another one worth watching. Hartford Athletic off to a real jump start there as well. So Every every team seems to have something exciting to offer this season. Even North Carolina, they got a win over Hartford after Hartford went six points from their first two matches. So you pick which team isn't going to make the playoffs. Good luck. Have fun with that, Gary. <laughs> Sounds like a you problem, my friend. And give you an idea of the scores that have uh, gone on already. Tampa Bay flex their muscle in St. Pete. Four goals to one. For expansion Rhode Island that is a welcome to the league lesson not nearly as bad as Birmingham <laughs> took it from Louisville City however uh, uh, Ray Serrano getting the first goal and didn't he play well but it's a number of really good performances from Lou City some of the new signings bombing up and down the flanks and goals were raining in Detroit able to come from behind get a 2-1 win in Indy and Charleston late 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 Yep, Charleston got one very late, and but well deserved. They seem to dominate Miami. They had way more chances, and they won that one four minutes from time. What about Detroit? Away, was that another third win in three? Yeah. Wow. Maybe they're onto something there in Detroit. Yeah. I'm not quite ready to give them that measure of credit yet. Dickio, new coach. I'm willing to give him the credit. <laughs> it's halftime here in Orange County. They deserve all the credit. They lead one nothing. The break, we'll show you how. Kick off the second half when we come back.
Tonight's match is presented in part by Hogue, the official orthopedic partner of Orange County Soccer Club. And once again, the Noah Benadu Foundation wants to remind fans to never drive drunk and get home safely. Let's take a look at our first half highlights between Orange County and Tulsa. We start in the 20th minute of play. Orange County, more the ball in this opening half, and when they got going facing forward is when they were their most dangerous. They're so good in and around the edge of the box. Cameron Dunbar are just looking for an option. Pins that and doesn't it whip towards the end? You're thinking now it's going wide. You think, oh, hang on a second, it's not going wide, is it? It just goes past the post. But they certainly, they were clever around the fringes. They had opportunities. And Chata there has a, a shot that flies over, but just give them a little bit too much space on the edge of the box to get that shot in. And you just felt that if they kept on doing that, something would happen. And Sofian Jafal is such a dangerous pass, so clever. Just turns in between those two defenders, sticks it past the goalkeeper. Michael Creek does get a left hand to it, but just can't push it out of the goal. That's a great turn and a fantastic strike from Sofian Jafal. Welcome to the club. And uh, that dance plus that reaction tells you all you need to know. Here's a look at the first half stats. And not a ton of action in front of goal on either side, but Tulsa just one shot to show. I think that's the big difference. Four shots to Orange County, one shot to FC Tulsa. And a lot of Orange County's possession was around the fringes of the Tulsa box. And they, for me, they looked a lot more dangerous. Orange County unbeaten in their last 22 matches in the league when they lead at halftime. Did not once lose a halftime lead in 2023. You'd have to go to April 24th of 2022. They led 1-0, lost 3-1 to Indy 11. So Tulsa have a mountain to climb here in Southern California. The wise man says kick, and so we do. Underway in the second half. I'll ride this all night long. <laughs> But the even wiser man knows a good pun when it's staring him yeah. right in the face. And if you include the two linesmen, is that the three wise men? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Trevor. This is... <laughs> then what's the fourth official? <laughs> Rodgers tries to sneak out of the play here. Well, Tulsa is going to have to utilize this uh, roster as best they can. It's going to be a, a remarkably difficult equation to try and put together for this staff. And they did make a change at halftime. Alex Delu has come in, the 23-year-old preseason trialist. We actually did spend time, the Indiana native, out here in Southern California, down in San Diego in Nisa last year. Ball whipped across, header handled with ease. Delu got beneath it. Delu dancing, running out of room. A couple of years in Nisa, by the way. He's also a gold star in Detroit. Oh, wow. He looked very sharp out uh, wide on the, on the right there. He sort of almost looked like he beat his man and then couldn't get the cross in in time. Well, his club debut today, and with it, his championship debut. Welcome to the second tier. It's early on in the season and throughout the league, we see quite a few debuts. County made a change of their own. Ethan Zubak came in. Now, Asensio was injured right at the end of the half. What's really intriguing is this is an out-and-out -out striker coming in for uh, an outside back. I wonder if they'll drop Ashish Chatter into that uh, left fullback spot. He's played there before. You'd think so. Yosef came out, interestingly enough, to allow Delu entrance. The subs are brought to you by Medequip. 
turning setbacks into comebacks. Backside! Oh, wow! How did that not get through? Wow, what a great chance for Orange County. I'm still not entirely sure how it even happened. It's a great cross to the far post, put back in, and then literally a miss hit from all of six yards out. Is that Dunbar? Yeah. I mean, just put this in the right direction. Creek was, in fact, without the paddle. <laughs> was. There was a yellow card that went to Segrist as well. We're drinking from a fire hose now. This is a pretty card-happy uh, occasion. Free kick to come. Jafal. Sneak down to Ferry. He's got to do something with it. He's gotten it all wrong. And now he's been taken out of his boots. Curling effort, Creek. Rising up and knocking this out. That's a good save from Creek. That was going in. That is some strike from out there, that angle. Dunbar again. And he puts that dip on it. You see the ball come down and the goalkeeper doing really well just to tip that over the crossbar. City side fiber corner. It's another short corner. All hung to the backside somehow and lobbed back in by Miles, but it's right to Creek. So Creek keeping Tulsa in at the moment. I love that Gnarly's just standing back there. Gnarly, the, the mascot at the back there. <laughs> in case people don't know who Gnarly is, because I didn't know. Well, I hope by April 20th you at least find him something decent for his birthday. I hear he likes good Tommy Bahama shirts. Right. Good press coming here from FC Tulsa, trying to get a, a mistake, and have they got turnover ball? They nearly did, yes they have. Scooped up by Ponce. Ponce cutting through the grass. Flick on header, there's the push in, Bourgeois. skips into the Orange County bench. You, know, you can always see Morton Carlson just sort of moving the chess pieces around yeah. a little bit, right? He just looks so cool and calm on the side. You really see him get uptight. <laughs> it's the Scandinavian nature. Well, Diallo's on a yellow card, and uh, I think he may have gotten his warning. That late push put Among down directly onto the ball. May have taken the wind out of him. Thomas Among not happy and a few of his teammates, including Kevin Partida, even less happy. Let's have a look. It's hard to see just where his head was hurt and why, but nonetheless, they get the free kick. Oh, 
you said in the first half, it just felt like some of those yellow cards were on the unnecessary side. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you put yourself in a spot where Among's down and writhing and the official just has to start to contemplate, especially when it seems like uh, cards have been flowing like water at moments in this game. I think referees will, will often rethink the second yellow. When they know you're on a yellow, they'll, they'll make sure that the second yellow is a real bad one before they give it to you. Some referees don't. Some will just give you a yellow for a normal <laughs> infringement. Each referee has their own way of thinking about it. But you just don't want to put the referee in that situation if you're, for example, Diallo there with that push. Because your heart must sink. As soon as you see the player go down to the ground, you think, oh, no, please, not the second yellow. <laughs> Game management, in-game management, so much about soccer IQ. A lot of people watching think it's just about how you control the ball, how you shoot, or whatever any of the specific skills are. But there's so much of football intelligence that goes into a game. Long throw into the box. Orange County clearance. Down by Bourgeois. Comes back through Sawahi. Very familiar, this new Tulsa staff from his time in Louisville, where he began his pro career. Lofted over Diallo's got it! Diallo! Enough from Shuttler to send it soaring over the bar. Good save from Shuttler. It's at him, just above his head, but you've got to get your hands there and you've got to make sure it clears the, clears the crossbar. It's at him. If, if he could just put it a bit left or right, Diallo, he might have had more joy. Another corner coming for Tulsa. Right in front of the county line coalition. Offers. And this last touched by Tulsa. Of all the problems Tulsa have had with Goodrum's injury and the fact they've already made two substitutions and they've got players on yellow cards, I think it's four now. They're still in this game at 1-0. They're still very much in this game. They're still battling. They've already had a few little set pieces and not even half chances, quarter chances perhaps. But they're alive and kicking and their fans have got to believe that they can still come away with something from this match. Diallo. Stojanovic cuts inside, Diallo got knocked down. That's the latest yellow. I think it went to Lamb for the challenge, not that ball being sent to Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, Diallo did really well there, burst of speed down the side there. You go, it's that leaning into the back of him, knock him over quite right by Owen Lamb. Good play from Diallo. Handful of corners in this half. Now free kick for Tulsa to try and find an equalizer. It's where Orange County's made their money in the young season. Set pieces. They have to defend another one now. Getting a lecture from Trevor Wiseman. Defenders in particular, don't be holding, don't be grabbing. As a wise man once said. <laughs> Your posts. County can deal with that. Diving header back into harm's way, so I got another peek to it and ultimately got by Stojanovic. Ponce. Something went on there with Rodgers. He's back up. Apparently, uh, isn't too much of an issue. Hey, 
You and I were remarking at halftime, how about New Mexico leading Phoenix going into the second half there. It's Dayon Harris. Scored the opener in the 16th minute. That is in Phoenix as well. Miles. For those perhaps uninitiated to Western Conference politics, those teams do not like each other. <laughs> That's an understatement. Skewed away from Duluth, picked up by Portillo. Sigrist, curling one over the top. Redirected header, yeah, free kick. And a chance for Orange County just to slow things down a little bit. Yeah, and they get some medical help perhaps, or if not, just get a bit of a breather. The danger always at 1-0 up is you start to sort of defend more than you should do because you've got the lead. You don't want to do that if you're Orange County. You want to get that second goal and the insurance goal. Now Zubak did the work to win that physically. Zubak hangs this up, a redirected header wide. That's Dunbar involved yet again. And he seems on the verge of a goal, and yet it's proven so elusive. Ethan Zubak doing so well to win the header, to make the sprint, get on the end of this ball, and then whip it in. It's a lovely ball whipped in, and Cameron Dunbar just gets ahead of his defender. Now for those watching in Tulsa tonight, Surely you're aware, the uh, larger viewing public may be less aware. All the changes that came with conference realignment, I know that's a phrase that the American sports fan has heard too much of, but with RGV receding and San Diego as well, and then the two incoming teams both on states adjacent to the Atlantic Ocean, Rhode Island and North Carolina, some teams had to dip over to the Western Conference now. Of course, one of those teams is FC Tulsa. So Orange County will have to play the return fixture this year as opposed to last year where you uh, only had to play an out-of-conference opponent once. Orange County was in the West, Tulsa in the East. So these two teams, it's a, a little more on the line this time around. And for Tulsa, You'll see both Vegas, who you start the season with, and Orange County eventually at One Oak Field later in the year. Well, some people believe that the Western Conference is, is tougher than the East. I don't know this yeah. year. Bouncing ball. That will skip all the way by Shuttler. I agree with you. I wouldn't want to make a call on that, but they are in the West in San Antonio, Orange County, Sac Republic. Monterey Bay, Phoenix, Colorado spring the switchbacks. Well, look at the bottom three right now beneath Tulsa. Four games, Phoenix, three points. If uh, that result holds, El Paso one point through four, including three home games in the books. Colorado Springs is 0-3. Yep. Could have predicted That's what that. I said. We couldn't have predicted it. It's a, it's a tough conference, both west and east. Corner for Tulsa. That's Shuttler with a strong punch. Bourgeois. Hold on, Colin Shuttler. It's never easy to punch those completely clear, but what you've got to try and do is, is get it away from as much danger as possible, and he did that. There are two teams with zero points in the league through three games. Colorado Springs and the reigning shield winner, Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Wow. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Who would have predicted that? It does feel like the world's a bit off its axis. <laughs> Portillo. News last week, Brooklyn was coming to the championship. 
News this week that Buffalo intends to join the championship. All the teams that are due in in due time, like Jacksonville. Soon to come, Des Moines, which uh, could be a real boon in the central states, where it's gotten a bit thinner in recent years. And hopefully these turn out to be good investments for those putting the money in. It yep. certainly has been in the NWSL. Oh, goodness. What was that San Diego one? They paid two, two million three, four years ago. They just sold it for 120, nearly 120. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a fair return from buying a football club. So, you know, well done to the women's game. And USL clubs, no doubt, also start to go up in value sharply in the years ahead. With the Super League right around the corner. So much of, of the way this progresses, not just using your, your stadium 17 times a year. Second tenant and opportunity to expand the footprint and grow the game. Good chance for a number of teams in the league to do that. Of course, a couple already affiliated with NWSL teams. Louisville, North Carolina. Zubak's going after this. This is a campfire. Snuffed out by Creek. Oh, Shuttler. He says, what Creek can do, I can do. So they're both coming out of their boxes here. Counting the very, very deep block again. Ball lobbed across. Segrist was there. Two Tulsa players just hit one another in the air. So we'll uh, skew out toward Portillo. And there goes Among. Allowing Zubak to power forward. Foul. That should come. Well, they, they could have at least considered a card for that. Let's go back to this. Oh, it's a great little flick on there from Owen Lamb under huge pressure at the far post. And it's the coming together of bodies, nothing nasty about that. But again, Orange County get to slow the game down a bit, get their big guys, and they're so dangerous. With the guys they have in the box. Sure looked like uh, the referee was reaching for a pocket. It ultimately holstered it. Well, popped over the top, grabbed by Creek. Quite the uh, result brewing in Oakland tonight. Las Vegas and Oakland were nil-nil at the half. The lights have dropped three on them in the second half in wow. about 20 minutes time. Just totally blown it open. Well then credit, even more credit to FC Tulsa for getting a 3-1 win in Vegas. Absolutely. That's turned over in a dastardly position among Zubak. Slid aside. He is so desperately seeking that lid lifter to his account here in OC. The play continues. Diallo. Just to the feet of Ponce. It's a late whistle, but a whistle indeed. That's two late tackles. So I'm not quite sure who the referee is going to book and what he's going to do, but definitely the card's going to come out. The important yeah. thing to remember is that Lamb's the one on the yellow, two and orange. Well, it's Oloski, Brian Oloski with, oh, it's both with Brian Oloski, so he's ah. definitely, definitely got to end up in the book, surely. Lamb, Oloski, and Chata are on yellows one way. Segrist, Portillo, Diallo, and Ponce the other. Owen 
Nam's got that role at the very front of the pack. He's got to make sure he gets his head on the ball. That did just go straight Ooh. through. And uh, lucky there's no additional touch or Shuttler could have been in trouble. Absolutely. That might have been the idea, but Owen Lamb was sort of the first to reach that area. So if it was any, any closer to the strikers, he probably would have cleared it. Nonetheless, always heart and mouth time when the ball goes between goalkeeper and defenders. Olaski Motors. Jafal. Lamb. Onto the halfway line. Shuttler is going to come for it. And that'll scrape the moon. Bouncing on Sawahi. And back to Creek. Just wondering when Morton Carlson's going to make a few more changes. There's some tired legs for Orange County. Just the one change so far with Ethan Zubak. Maybe bring some fresh legs off, off the bench. And try and put this game to bed if you're Orange County. For FC Tulsa, they've done a decent job second half of just probing and looking for a chance. Is there one here? Early from Segrist. Kept away from Diallo, Segrist. Could Segrist have hit that first time and it dropped for him inside the box? He's got a great left leg. Just thinking, thump that ball. He tries to bring it under control and then loses. Have a look here when it gets knocked down. I'm thinking now, volley, volley. And he doesn't. And there was a chance there to have banged that in the back of the net. Shoes tied, free hadn't forgotten. Dragged it a little bit closer to the touch line. Pushing and the shoving continues. Rogers alongside Jafal. High arcing effort met by Shuttler, who tonight could become Orange County's all-time wins and shutout leader. Now he's uh, 18 and a half minutes from that possibility. Yeah, he can beat Rukowski's record of 13 clean sheets. Isn't that kind of wild? I mean, Rakowski obviously had that amazing run, right, to the final in 2021. He wasn't here very long. We're getting to the point now where he's more tenured in Phoenix than he was in Orange County. Here's wow. a change. So that's uh, Harvey St. Clair coming in. Native of uh, Kingston in England who came up over a decade in the Chelsea Academy before spending five years on the books at Venezia, but largely out on loan elsewhere. It's a 
very tense crowd, isn't it? This match can still swing one of two ways. Or even more than two ways, for all we know. But, it's, you know, there's a possibility of a, of a second goal and just shutting it down for Orange County. There's a possibility of an equaliser. I guess the third way is just to stay as it is. So I think all the crowd, are, the singing's still continuing, which is great to hear at Orange County. It's a championship soccer stadium. Stojanovic, she was leading off that back shoulder. I haven't seen much of Stojanovic, have we? Especially second half, and you just wonder whether, without Philip Goodrum, they just haven't got that incisive player who can get in there and make some magic happen. And even if he's not the one who makes the magic, don't you always have at least one eye on Philip Goodrum? Oh, geez. Absolutely you do. And you can drag defend a couple of defenders out of the middle and open up space for Stojanovic to operate in. Bushla. Skittering through midfield, there's Stojanovic. The space he vacated, Diallo happily takes. As Segrist on the overlap. Held up by Ferry. Tio. Bourgeois. St. Clair. For Tio. That was dipping all the way, and Shuttler shuts it down. Okay, and the good defense of Orange County is just keeping FC Tulsa at arm's length, 30 yard shot there. I just wonder though, there's been only the one change for Orange County, Bryce Jamison's pace. Would it be useful now with a tiring Thomas among to have a quickie just sitting there ready for the counter attack? Just wondering what's going through Morton Carlson's mind and what changes is he's thinking about producing. Orange County making a change. To some extent, you feel for Dunbar. It's not that he wasn't in the right positions, or that he was all that far off tonight, but he leaves without a goal nonetheless. In his second start, fourth appearance. I agree with you. I thought he was very, very effective. So it is Jamison. Nice to see. It just made sense to me to have that pace up front because this guy is an absolute flyer. And if you're FC Tulsa and you push too many bodies forward, be careful on the counter attack. Jamison can put this game to bed in a matter of seconds. The uh, US Youth International of uh, pretty grand acclaim last year. Reminder that Orange County will hit the road the next two weeks as Tulsa try and advance here, take at least something out of their road trip. They'll return home to Championship Stadium Saturday, April 20th. See Sacramento, Gnarly's birthday party, of course. Don't miss out on the event. It's fun for the whole family. Get tickets today, orangecountysoccer.com slash tickets here comes orange county flocking forward launched ahead saddled among oh that's short of the scoreboard yeah probably wasn't the right moment for him to shoot there he was leaning backwards wasn't he <laughs> he's a bit tired as well he's run his socks off thomas among He's going backwards and he tries to turn it. Would have, well, would have been some strike to turn and hit that in the top corner. He's even laughing to himself.
Aaron Casanari comes in and Nate Worth as well. Subs by Metaquip. This is the end of the line sub-wise for Tulsa. Remember, even if they were to need a potential sub for a head injury, for instance, which, of course, the USL continues to utilize that rule, because Goodrum went down pregame, was initially in the starting lineup, not eligible to play anymore. So that's it, no matter what. Unless they need to utilize that backup goalkeeper, unlikely as that may be. So all the chips are in the middle now for Tulsa. And with time to make an impact at that, the 17-year-old Worth and Casanari, the 22-year-old Slovenian who makes his club debut. It does sound like Tulsa will eventually have some additional reinforcements. Yeah, we don't know exactly what, but we hear that there will be a top-class player joining very, very soon. Exciting times. Yeah, absolutely. The more the merrier in terms of players with real ability. And you want depth because you know you're going to have injuries during the season. Good interchange, Zubak teed it up. How often did we see these one nils Orange County last season and the year in which they won the championship? Time and time again, they would just eke out wins by a goal, defend superbly well, keep clean sheets. It just seems to be their, their DNA. If you were to define Orange County, you go one nil. <laughs> Hard to beat and you know, almost impossible to break down because they drop into this very, very low block and right in the final third of the of the pitch and then they break with pace and power and ability and they get those goals they need and then they just defend that goal. That was Miles that just sent a real statement with that tackle. We'll go back to Tulsa if they are able to make some moves here to continue to bolster this. We see it so much in Europe, right? The, the quick trigger in which coaches come and go. It's Nate Worth gets tackled. They were just getting started with Sam Dorr. Just getting started with Blair Gavin last year. And this is a totally revitalized or a total new attempt at a restart for Tulsa. Ball bouncing all the way through. Somehow that foul, Shuttler off his line, denies Deleu. Deleu, if he controls that properly the first time it comes to him, he's got a chance of scoring, a very good chance of scoring the equalizer. His first touch is poor. Have a look there, it goes away from him to the touchline and keeper. Colin Shuttler does really well to shut it down. But if he controls that properly, he's got a great chance. Corner speared away. But let's say this, Tulsa two years ago, they were slow. They, 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 not very mobile, not very versatile. It was a group that was toward the bottom of the standings and there was a clear reason why. Last year, that was a group that was fighting to the last two weeks to make the playoffs. It's a group that made the playoffs in 2020 and 2021 and now have missed out two years running. They've made the playoffs three times as a club. They finished in last place twice. So it's a, a group that certainly has the potential to do something, the ambition to do something. And low key, I love that they went out and got two guys that helped really spearhead a large segment of those nine straight conference finals in Louisville. That hangs up from Segrist and grabbed in the air by Shuttler. Gratefully grabbed by Shuttler. That ball is not a proper cross when you put that much time in it. It's going to be a goalkeeper's all day long. And Segrist is such a good player, but he would have whipped that in with a bit of pace, but way too much height on it.
And you're talking about Tulsa, by the way, last season, what was only two points off a playoff place? They came so close. Yeah. Heartbreak in the end. Finished 10th. Top eight will make the playoffs this year in each conference. Bang on the back of the head for Bryce Jamison. From Bourgeois. Yep. Welcome to the game. <laughs> Mind you, he has been on the pitch a few good few minutes, but the big defender letting him know that when he enters into their territory, they're going to let him feel the physical effects of it. But, you know, just looking at, at him as a, a good young player, what a talent, to, a talent Bryce Jamison is. You already mentioned Ashton Miles, who's 21, and they reckon he's going to be a top-class defender. Ben Barjalo, 17, the reserve keeper, Duran Faree, 17. They reckon he's a big, big talent. Joey Buckley, Ben Norris. A lot of good talent coming through this Orange County system. Brian Olaski getting the curtain call he deserves. They announce him off the field. The player making his 100th appearance for the club. And in trots Kyle Scott for the first time this year. A year and a half now with the club, 31 starts, 33 appearances last year. And the way to endear yourself sometimes, 13 yellows and a red in that time. <laughs> He's a real competitor and he's a very good player with a, a proper background both in the MLS in the States and in England as well with the spell at Chelsea started off and Newcastle, FC Cincinnati. Important player for them and just hope he can steer clear of injury problems. But he's just come back from being out. Just a few of the players Orange County do have out. Ryan Dogman, what a good player he is. Dylan Power, Juan Santana, Joey Buckley, Christian Sorto, Marcus Nakim. And then you noticed it pregame. You actually noticed it last week that Seth Kasipli came off a bit gingerly last game. Delu trying to find an equalizer for Tulsa into the final five minutes. Tried to send it across. Worth now. Ball bouncing and eventually Ferry sidewind this into the stands. Again, they, they do so well to not give away a cheap penalty, to not get their hand on a ball, to block shots, to whatever it is. They're just the masters at, at defending a one goal lead, Orange County. And that doesn't come through pure luck. That's a lot of putting bodies in the line, but also Again, just being sensible in the right positions and, and how you defend and denying space as well, which they're very good at doing. Got away from Segrist. But you notice that uh, Kasipli, who was hoping to make his 200th championship regular season appearance tonight, won't get the opportunity to make the bench, we presume due to injury. It's also just a, this is as deep as any roster in the league. I don't know. It's, if it's not, it's very close because they've got a lot of very good experienced players on that bench. It, you know, and the interesting thing about it is, you know, you and I were chatting about Louisville City earlier today and the depth that they've added. There's a ton of all league players. This is just a good top to bottom team. Segrist sends away Portillo. That was curling the wrong direction. That was worth an, an effort, wasn't it? 25 yards out, Portillo. But again, that's that's where the dangers mostly come from. These long-range shots. It's because they just make it. They crowd that center of that box, and they do win their headers in the air most of the time. Orange County, so they they leave you trying to shoot from distance, which they're very happy. They say if you can beat Colin Shuttler from 25 yards. Go for it. Unfortunately, Miami FC did it twice. True. <laughs> well, certainly once from 25 and one from about 15 yards, but that was not, not Colin Shuttler's best day. 
but generally speaking, very difficult to beat Colin Shuttler from anything over 18 yards. It has now been 28 plus minutes since an Orange County shot. Orange County trying to survive the late Tulsa Tempest. Take the three points, continue what would be a four game unbeaten run to start. And eight of the 12 possible points. Tulsa starting later than most, only their second game of the campaign. I'm going to do both on the road. You'd argue having to go to Vegas, it's, to be fair, far less of a clown show than it used to be going to Vegas. I can't speak for what happens when the game ends, but at least during the game, it's a, it's a soccer match now. No more jacuzzis next to the pitch, hot tubs and all those things. B b beds. <laughs> beds. <laughs> Jose Batista has shown up and laid down the, the law in Las Vegas. But nevertheless. Lamb. How different is this? Orange County, at least for a moment, was able to step on it. Lamb able to wing it back forward. Game management now in the 90th minute from Orange County. Just going to keep possession, take their time. But even if FC Tulsa come away from this without points, they've put up a really good show under trying circumstances with the loss of Philip Goodrum and early changes to their, their back line through injury. And they've really fought back well in the second half. And I think Mario Sanchez will be pleased with that. Won't, won't be pleased with the fact they haven't got any points, assuming this result remains. But he'll be very happy, I'm sure, with their attitude. And it's just their second match. I mean, Orange County, it's their fourth match. So FC Tulsa is still not into the same groove yet that Orange County are into. Stoppage time presented by the Zolfagari Law Firm. Four added minutes. And how many times do you hear a coach say, yeah, our culture is good and chemistry is good? Preseason, that's... That's pretty simplistic. It's it's when the chips are down. They were yeah. down tonight for Tulsa, and the team showed. Despite overwhelming odds, they're still hanging in. Segrist. Bourgeois. Shuttler lets it run in, and Orange County will try and shorten the game. Well, with this result as it stands, they go top of the table again, Orange County. And that's very impressive. Unbeaten in four matches. They will be top on eight points alongside San Antonio. Header into a wide open space, and Orange County close it down. It's worth noting, Tulsa, it, it looks better in hindsight. You could argue they, they were, in fact, coming together. They made moves that did move the needle. Player down for Orange County grappling with that left leg, and that looks like the captain, Partita. But it was a five-game win streak, August, September, where it was Detroit, Indy, Miami, Hartford, RGV. Detroit got the last playoff spot, ultimately beat Pittsburgh. Knocked out the player shield winner. But you're, you're talking all teams that finished eighth or below in the final standings, and that's what had Tulsa right on the verge and in control of their destiny going into the last uh, couple weeks where the depth did him in. Partit is up. He's going to have to walk off the field for some measure of time. And what was four minutes will probably be closer to five now. There's the wave into Partita to return. Mario Sanchez doesn't care for the 
Pedantic move backward. They're trying to find some tempo now. There may be just one minute remaining to find an equalizer. Ball whipped across, header wide! Oh, that wow. was the moment for FC Tulsa, certainly so. Nate Worth, the 17-year-old, like a salmon out of the spring. Nate Worth, that was your chance to put your name in lights, and a great chance it was just to hit the target, force the keeper at least to do something. Just goes wide of the far post. Heartbreak for the young man, 17 years of age. What a moment that would be for him, and what a great cross in as well. That's the first time that Orange County have been vulnerable. They've dealt with everything that came in so well, except for that one moment. And they're lucky that Nate Worth wasn't able to hit the target. They almost paid a two-point price against this new interconference foe. Well, new and old and new again, conference foe. <laughs> well, we're down to the final seconds now, Portillo. There's a little room to run into here for St. Clair. Spinning around, Portillo taps it outside. The service across, header down right at Shuttler. And is he holding the club record? Wins and clean sheets. Just wondering, Seagrass there couldn't get enough power on that header. Could he have headed it square? Maybe there was someone in the box waiting. It is full time. Colin Shuttler stands alone in Orange County lore. And the best start since 2011 for OCSC continues. Four unbeaten to start the campaign. And a gutsy win against this Tulsa side that would just never say die. Yeah, give Tulsa credit. Second half, they were really much better. They came at Orange County and at the end, ever so close. Nate Worth could so very well have grabbed them a point, but Orange County, they are the masters of defending leads, and they showed again tonight why they're going to be so hard to break down this season. The player of the match presented by Hogue. And Colin Shuttler will celebrate with the boys. And he uh, ultimately perhaps spared blushes in the final seconds of this thing. Also made a key save or two as the second half progressed. As Tulsa grew into the game seeking that late equalizing goal. So Orange County win this one, 1-0 one over Tulsa. Walk you through the implications and the highlights when we come back. Tonight's final score, sponsored by Patterson Autos, as Orange County defeats FC Tulsa. 1-0 tonight in Irvine. 
Well, that flag was onto something. Soccer, beer, whiskey. <laughs> Orange County's going to feel like they need it all. With Gary Mike, here we go. Full-time highlights and plenty to discuss. They are presented by Omega Accounting. Starting the 27th minute of play. And uh, ultimately, this is all that uh, Orange County needed. Jafal, great turn there. Absolutely been least Two defenders behind, bends the ball. Michael Creek gets a hand to it, but too much power on the stroke. But just getting between those two defenders was such a clever move. And that turns out to be exactly what separates these two teams in a very, very classy moment from Sofiane Jafal. Skip ahead to the 50th minute and Orange County winning the ball high up the field off Ferry. Ultimately, this close. Good save by Creek. Yeah, Dunbar with the effort and Creek just tipping it over the crossbar. That ball was dipping right under the crossbar. But here's the moment. Nate Worth, the 17 year old, good build up on the right hand side. Watch this ball get whipped in from out wide. He's unmarked. He comes in late. He gets ahead and he doesn't hit the target. Wouldn't it have been awesome if he could have got on the end of that Sinclair cross and stuck it in the back of the net and all his teammates hold their head in their hands, as does he. Unlucky son, but opportunity lost. And Gnarly's like, hey, look at these guys. 2-0-2 in the young season. <laughs> uh, pays to be, uh, well, Gnarly, I guess. And the County Line Coalition uh, take it in. Uh, look at the final stats sponsored by Hogue. Chance, Gary, for your final thoughts as you peer over them. Well, I think the shots might show Tulsa had a few more, but that was towards the end when Orange County had the lead. They were defending it. They were dropping back a lot deeper. But I thought the first half was Orange County's. It looked really good and exciting and dangerous. They sat back a bit second half and allowed FC Tulsa to try and break them down, which they couldn't do. So again, ultimately, credit to Orange County for the three points in a good game. And FC Tulsa, there will be lots of good things to come in the future if they keep showing that sort of commitment and ability to fight right to the death. Orange County have now scored in their last 10 games in the league. That's their longest run in half a decade, stretching back to the end of 2018-2019. Final score is presented by Patterson Autos. Orange County, a winner here. They knock off Tulsa 1-0 on a stunner from Sofian Javal. For Gary Bailey, our entire team in Orange County and beyond, Mike Watts saying, thanks for watching. Shuttler the clean sheet, Orange County the victory. Good night. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.